Dear students, uh, in this lecture we reach the highest center in the brain, the cerebral cortex. Uh, during the evolution, uh, the different brain vesicles have uh, uh, variable proportions. Uh, in fish, for example, the telencephalon is very small. Uh, it is represented by the olfactory bulb only, and the other uh, brain vesicles are seen much better. So the diencephalon, the mesencephalon, the darker yellow, uh, the metencephalon, and here you see the developing uh, cerebellum in pink, and the myelencephalon, which is the metal oblong in. And if you look at that, uh, the telencephalon gradually increases in dominancy and uh, proportion. Uh, in the uh, more primitive mammals, we have still a smooth, smooth, smooth surface, but if, uh, as we go to the uh, more complex uh, mammals, such as the cat, we have already convolutions and sousy between them. And you see the human, uh, obviously, it has convolutions and uh, called gyri and sousy between them. Uh, the birds are missing from this line, but uh, I found a photo about the uh, songbird uh, brain and you see it has obviously still smooth surface compared to the uh, human. Within the telencephalon we have uh, different uh, uh, areas uh, during the evolution and uh, embryogenesis. Uh, the telencephalon vesicles uh, do not thicken and differentiate equally everywhere in the wall. Uh, the lower part increases in thickness first, this is the radiator striatum, and uh, otherwise we see three patterns of the cortex. The most ancient cortex, labeled with blue, is found at the bottom of the hemispheres. This is called paleocortex. If I add the corresponding white matter, this is called paleopallium. This is the oldest and it includes the uh, rhinencephalon, which is the, ol the olfactory cortex, olfactory bulb and the related structures, such as the uncus. The next uh, during evolution is the archipallium, or if it's the gray matter, only the archicortex. Uh, this is violet and this is located on the medial side of the hemisphere. And uh, this includes uh, the hippocampus formation, especially the ammon's horn, the, the pathway which starts from there, the fornix and the inducing grisum, which is the brain matter on the corpus callosum, which will be on the top. Uh, and in human, in primates, I would say, including the human, the neocortex is the dominant uh, type of the cortex, uh, together with the white matter is called neopallium, uh, so most of the brain areas belong to this. Uh, and uh, we must not forget again that the basal ganglia developed from the wall of the uh, lateral ventricles, so this way they belong to the telencephalon as well. Histologically, we have two types. The first two, the more ancient uh, cortical areas, have allocortex in histo, it means uh, they don't have six layers, only three or four, and the neocortex, uh, histologically it's called isocortex, uh, with six layers. Uh, in human, you see that the uh, Paleocortex, the most ancient, is restricted to the medial side at the bottom of the hemisphere. This is the uncus, for example, in the uh, uh, parahippocampus gyrus. The next is the archicortex, uh, including the hippocampus formation and the uh, fornix from there. But we see this also on the top of the corpus callosum as intusium grisum. And the rest, what we studied as gyri and sulci, would be related to the neocortex. And you see here with the green that the basal ganglia develop from the wall of the uh, lateral ventricle, so they belong to the telencephalon. But later on, with the development of the descending and ascending projection pathways in the internal capsule, uh, the caudate because is separated from the putamen, but still we have connections between them, and this is called the striatum. Histologically, the neocortex, as I told you, has six layers. The uppermost, which is the most superficial, is the plexiform or molecular layer, is relatively poor in cells. Uh, the next, uh, which is uh, rich in cells, is the external granular layer. Then we have the external pyramidal layer with pyramidal cell dominancy, but with small size, no cells. Then we have the internal granular layer, uh, where we have uh, rather 
uh, interference and pyramidal cells. Then the internal pyramidal or ganglionic layer with the larger pyramidal cells. This is the fifth layer. And the multiform, which is the, the thickest layer at the bottom, uh, is close then to the white matter, which is located similar to the cerebellum inside. This uh, staining uh, is after the Golgi, I mean, this uh, sch uh, schematic figure is after the Golgi staining, uh, showing her cells with the cell bodies and processes. The next one with Nissel shows only the cell bodies at the beginning of the dendrites, as we studied. And the third one, what we don't teach, is the Weigers technique, which is able to visualize the, uh, the white matter, uh, the uh, processes, the axons of the fibers, uh, axons of the nerve cells. Sorry. Uh, this shows the type of the nerve cells in the cerebral cortex. I like to highlight something. The key cell is the pyramidal cell, which is excitatory. In contrast to the key cell of the cerebellar cortex, the Purkinje cells, which were inhibitory, if you remember, they release uh, GABA, pyramidal cells release uh, uh, glutamate. The other cells are basically inhibitory cells, and these are the interneurons. They have uh, various extensions, for example, the horizontal cell is found in horizontal in the cortex in the same layer, that means the first layer in this case. We have fusiform cell, which is able to uh, travel through several layers vertically, connecting several uh, pyramidal cells between the different zones. We have stellate and basket, similarly to the cerebellar cortex. We have this interesting cell, the Martinotti, the cell body of which is located in the sixth layer and the axon sends through all the layers up to the first, where it divides into two. And we have the uh, glial cell like so called neuroglyphorum. Uh, which is similar to the astrocyte. But th these are interneurons, as I told you, and these are mostly inhibitory. Again, pyramidal cells are excited. Uh, this shows uh, the connections of the cortical cells. Uh, the blue uh, color shows the afferents. Uh, laterally, on each side, we see those which ascend up to the first two layers. These are from other cortical uh, centers, so these are the cortical-cortical connections, including association and commercial pathways. And this blue in the middle uh, ascends mostly to the fourth layer, where it arises and then terminates on uh, other interneurons, mostly, uh, or pyramidal cells directly. Uh, this is how the ascending projection pathways terminate. And uh, the Pyramidal cells, which are labeled in uh, pink, uh, have also two dominant uh, layers. The external pyramidal layer, pyramidal cells with smaller size, uh, send axons to the other cortical regions. This is what it means, this is white matter already otherwise. And they will be the commercial and association pathways, they terminate somewhere else in the cortex. And from the fifth layer, these axons will form the projection pathways which leave the cortex and terminate somewhere in, in a subcortical region. Uh, this is the rule that I listed here with the corresponding layers. So the ipsilateral cortical cortical uh, pathways or fibers are the association fiber, fibers. They originate mostly from the third layer where we have the smaller sized pyramidal cells with shorter axons and they terminate in, in the second layer mostly uh, in other cortical centers, but ipsilaterally in the same hemisphere. Uh, something similar in case of the contralateral cortical cortical uh, fibers, these are the commercial fibers, they originate also mostly from the third layer and they terminate mostly in the second, but in the other hemisphere, usually in primates in identical points with the star. And uh, uh, the cortical subcortical pathways, so the descending projection pathways, originate mostly from the fifth layer, where we have larger pyramidal cells. Uh, and the most famous uh, pathway is the pyramidal tract, which is uh, the cortical nuclear and the cortical spinal tract together. I like to highlight, even if we see the, the giant pyramidal cells of bats, they give only uh, one to three percent of the origin of the pyramidal tract. So we have other 
uh, descending projection pathways I listed here. We have cortical pontine, what we studied already, uh, as a connection to the uh, uh, pontine nuclei and wireless to the cerebellum, that gives the most important, most abundant occurrence of the cerebellum, if you remember. And uh, Professor Regler did you mention the basal ganglia, and from the diffusion of the cortex, we have a connection to the striatum, which is the input gate uh, of the basal ganglia. This is called cortical striatum tract. In addition to these four big ones, let's say we have cortical rubral to the red nucleus, we have cortical olivary to the inferior olivary nucleus, they play a role in the motor uh, system as well. And uh, we have cortical reticular to the reticular formation. You know, the reticular formation should receive from everywhere input and it sends to everywhere output. That is the basic rule, so that's not surprising that we have the cortical reticular uh, tract as well. And we have another one which is uh, to the thalamus, to the different thalamic nuclei. And uh, this originates mostly from the sixth, so it's a bit different from the others, but uh, nobody will ask it, I guess. And the fourth type of the pathways should be mentioned here uh, is the subcortical cortical, the ascending projection uh, pathways. They terminate mostly in the fourth layer, where we have the uh, internal uh, granular layer. And uh, this uh, would be altogether the different thalamic radiations, uh, what I mentioned last time, including the acoustic and optic radiation as well. This shows basically uh, almost the same, uh, the uh, afferent uh, options, light blue for the commissural and association pathways for the first two layers, and the dark blue for the ascending projection pathways called thalamic radiations or just thalamocortical tracts. And uh, the two efferents from the upper, more superficial pyramidal uh, layer, these will be the so-called uh, association commercial pathways and from the deeper, from the fifth layer, we have the, the descending projection pathways. Otherwise we see other uh, uh, interneurons in this figure, such as the Martin of what I mentioned earlier, but we have uh, two new compared to the previous slides, the Golgi type 2 cells and the white field. Uh, the cerebral cortex uh, 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 is uh, approximately two square meter a big area altogether, and the thickness is uh, two, three millimeters. And uh, the number of neurons is, uh, was a good question. Uh, in our Sanitarius textbook from the uh, 60s, uh, mentioned only 10 billion nerve cells. Later on, uh, Thomas Freund, who is the head of the uh, experimental brain research uh, uh, laboratory in Budapest, uh, mentioned approximately 100 billions, so somewhere between them. And uh, I heard from a Norwegian couple who got Nobel Prize two years ago, they were invited to page, they mentioned 86 billions, so this is now the most precise number. And the technique uh, was special how somebody, not uh, this couple, uh, estimated the uh, nerve cells uh, because the Golgi technique which visualizes the nerve cells with cell bodies and processes uh, cannot, you know, visualize everything, just certain cells, nobody knows why. So it wasn't proper a technique for the uh, precise estimation of the nerve cells. Plus, the arrangement of the nerve cells is not uh, the same everywhere. There are some areas such as the granular layer of the cerebellum where we have much more nerve cells than in the molecular layer. So we couldn't estimate properly and somebody uh, ground the whole brain and uh, uh, opened up the membranes with special solution and the uh, nuclei were removed and the nuclei were stained and after the number of the nuclei uh, they were able to estimate and this would be the most uh, precise uh, recently with 86 million again. Uh, that is also interesting uh, from uh, Professor Freud these uh, data that uh, approximately uh, 10 to 100,000 synapses found on one nerve cell and uh, one axon is able to form 40 to 60,000 synapses or synapses with other nerve cells. So that's why we have a certain convergency and divergency 
between the nerve cells. And if we, for example, uh, regard the uh, convergence, uh, the, the time between the two firings will be very imp uh, important. If uh, the uh, two nerves uh, firings are quite synchronized, uh, it means not more than two to three millisecond the difference between these two, then it uh, results in amplification, uh, so burning, it gives us memory and learning. If uh, this is more than 10 millisecond, so it's a delay, then it will be inhibitory. This is how the inhibitor cells work, for example, in the hippocampus. And these are kind of uh, super polyps in a pool, which then regulate how the uh, synchronous swimmers can come up to the water, uh, above the water. So this is the role of these uh, inhibitory cells. So this is a kind of synchronization. Uh, the other interesting uh, unit in the cerebral cortex is the column, but this is only functional unit in contrast to the cerebellum where the Golgi cells are able to form morphological and the functional units. Here we don't see any cell which uh, you know, uh, determines uh, uh, anatomical unit, just functional units. And this is what you see through the whole uh, perimeter, including pyramidal cells, more superficially deeper, and we have uh, mostly interneurons in this. And the number of the uh, columns may vary also in the textbooks because the uh, number of the nerve cells are also different. So this is Hungarian you know, uh, data. Uh, in page where the neuroscience started in the 50s, 60s, uh, there were two very famous professors. One is uh, the anatomist professor, Professor Sentago today. I cited him several times because he was the founder of the anatomy department in Page after the Second World War. And uh, he was nominated several times for Nobel Prize. And in the physio department, in physio department, Professor Grostian was very famous also. And uh, he was nominated also for a Nobel Prize, but they didn't get it. And as a kind of uh, replacement or substitution of the Nobel Prize. Uh, the first time uh, when uh, the Brain Prize was given in 2011 uh, by a, a Danish uh, foundation, three Hungarians got this prize first time. And uh, Buzsáki, Jörg Buzsáki, is a, a student of, of the former professor Grostyan in the uh, physio department, and Tomás Freund, who works now in Budapest, and Peter Schoen, who works in Oxford, uh, were students of Professor Sentai they are otherwise origin from Budapest. And they uh, described the morphology and the functional correlation of the hippocampus, so one of the most uh, uh, ancient part of the uh, cortex. Uh, uh, Jörg Buzsáki, who works in Rutgers University in the US, uh, uh, with his team developed a very special uh, instrument, let's say, the neurograde, which is a uh, <coughs> saran wrap like very flexible uh, material uh, uh, containing 120 electrodes, and that's why he's able to uh, put this on different areas of the, the surface of the brain because it's quite flexible and is able to record, you know, uh, signals from the nerve cells most precisely. So in vivo as well, so we can expect lots of data from his technique recently. <coughs> the first uh, figure shows uh, this uh, ceremony when they got the brain prize and uh, uh, this one with other, you know, uh, brain prize winner and uh, Nobel prize winner, uh, John O'Keefe, who got the Nobel prize together with the Norwegian couple uh, with uh, Maybrit Moser and Edward Moser, and uh, they are friends and uh, partly pupils of Professor Buzsáki, uh, common dinner in Norway. And this is the Hungarian, let's say, uh, head of the neuroscience, including uh, uh, Yuri, who is now in the US. This is uh, Tomás Freund from Budapest, uh, Sylvester Mizi, who was the former president of the uh, Hungarian Academy of Sciences, uh, he graded also in page, and Professor Polkovic, 
who is anatomist and he knows probably the best uh, the brain morphologically in the world. Uh, amazing how he uh, mapped uh, from a biochemical and the molecular biological aspect the brain. Uh, here you see that we, even within the neocortex we have different patterns. Uh, in our slides we have only two types, the so-called agranular layer, which is typical for the motor cortex, and the granular, which is for the uh, sensory cortex. In our slide, we have the central sulcus, and on each side we have a part of the, the primary motor and primary uh, sensory cortex, so the pre-central and post-central gyrus. But we have other types. Maybe I'd like to highlight the last one, uh, the fifth, which is around the uh, visual center. If you look at that, here we have quite large fourth layer because this is where the afferent uh, from the ascending projection pathways terminate and macroscopically they are able to make a whitish line. I show this uh, to my students as destroyer of January. Uh, with initial staining you see the motor and the sensory cortex. In case of the motor cortex, uh, with uh, pyramidal cell dominancy, we are able to distinguish a little better of it than in the sensory. What we see is the, that the first one is relatively pale, the second is relatively rich in cells, and the rest is uh, difficult, but we see the fifth one uh, with the giant pyramidal cells of bats, and then we can divide the remaining uh, third and fourth just roughly because nobody is able to tell this for sure. And the remaining is the monotiform layer uh, at the bottom and we don't see here the white matter in case of the motor. With the same uh, magnification in case of the sensory cortex, which is also called the uh, cortex because uh, relatively less uh, pyramidal cells are seen, we have bigger trouble for the uh, distinguish, dis uh, for distinguishing the different layers. We have the Again, molecular layer on top, that is okay, but from the second, we are not able to distinguish properly. So, somewhere here where we have larger pyramidal cells, but not so big as the giant in the motor, uh, this would be the fifth, and between the rest, and the multiform is uh, a little bit thinner than in case of the motor, and this way uh, we have the white matter included in this photo already. <coughs> from our uh, Slides uh, with Nissel, it shows the Nissel granulation, uh, the rough endoplasmic reticulum in the cytoplasm, in the pericardium, and the beginning of the dendrites. And with Golgi staining, we see the cell body and the processes. What you see is that the pyramidal uh, cell has two types of uh, dendrites. One ascends to the surface, I mean to the first layer, that is the dendrite, uh, the apical dendrite, and we have another dendrite the basal dendrite, which uh, ramifies at the level of the cell body. And we have across the apical dendrite a little thinner process. This is the exon, which may terminate in the cortex in case of the association and commissural pathways, or it forms descending projection pathways. Uh, the Brodmann areas are seen in this picture. Uh, we uh, studied some, we don't need to know the whole. Uh, we have altogether 52 otherwise. We studied the fourth as the primary motor, the sixth as the pre-motor, eighth is the frontal eye uh, field movement, uh, and uh, we have three, one, two behind the central sulcus as the primary somatosensory, uh, 44, 45 for the uh, motor speech center as Proca, uh, then we mentioned 41, 42 for the acoustic, 17, 18, 19 for the visual, and uh, maybe this one should be mentioned, 22 is the restricted Wernicke, together with 39 and 40 will be the larger extent of the Wernicke. Uh, on this side, the medial surface, we see the single age at 24, Uncus for the olfactory is 34, I don't think anybody will ask it. This picture shows the motor and the sensory homunculus, the little uh, man represented in the cortex, they should be upside down, but you see uh, the enormous uh, enlarged area regarding the face, uh, including the uh, lip and the tongue in both cases, and the upper lip, especially the hands. Uh, 
If I uh, show you on a frontal cut the same, you see that the, uh, in both cases the head rated structures, I mean areas are in the lower part of the uh, gyrus, in case of the pre-central and post-central gyrus, then the hand comes. So that's why basically two-thirds of the pre-central gyrus is occupied by these two uh, structures and the rest is for the trunk and the lower limb, which is partly on the medial surface. Something similar in case of the sensory as well. What is interesting, maybe uh, you didn't think of this, uh, the motor doesn't show any uh, part of the genitalia because skeletal muscle innervation is related only to the ischiocavanus and bulbospongius, probably not precise, and that's why a the low amount of upper neurons, that's why not represented. And even in case of the sensory, the genitalia have a very small area, it means uh, the epicritic sensibility, the fine touch, uh, requires much more neurons than the uh, genitalia. If I go back to here for a second, we have a, uh, maybe one difference in the order, what I forgot to tell you. Uh, so this is the sensory, and if I put it in upside down, then this would be how it is located from uh, the bottom. If you look at the blue, so the head would be here, then the hand, uh, then the trunk, and uh, so the neck, upper limb, trunk, lower limb. In case of the motor, what is special, that after the head, we have immediately the upper limb with the hand and then we have the neck and trunk. So this is the only difference in these two. Uh, not so important, but maybe somebody realizes this in the figures. This shows with uh, modern technique uh, the functional activity in the case of movement. So it shows the motor cortex especially uh, with uh, functional MR technique. You see that uh, the lower limb related structures are I mean, lower limb related structures are very close to the longitudinal cerebral fissure, such as the foot, and as we go down, the elbow and then the thumb will be a little lower on the convexity, and especially the head related structures, such as the lip, will be the uh, most lateral and the most inferior in the uh, pre central channels. <coughs> This shows much more centers in the uh, cortex. Of course, you, have, uh, you don't need to know these, uh, just the major uh, centers. For example, the uh, Broca. You see, it's quite complicated in spite of this. And uh, uh, if you look at the uh, Wernicke, uh, 22 in larger extent, which includes 39 and 40, uh, it's even more complicated as we teach it, because uh, more complex sensory functions are related to this area, so that's why it's also called a secondary somatosensory center, such as the stereognosis, so orientation in the space, or the body mapping uh, to be oriented on the body, which is the right, which is the left side, and if we have lesion in these regions, these functions can be deleted. So that's why it can be interesting. Otherwise, you see the sensory, why we have three, one, two. The three includes uh, uh, pain and the temperature, so the protopathic sensibility. Then number one is the touch, the next layer, and the most complicated for epicritic sensation is the uh, kinesthetic sensation. Uh, on the medial surface, you see the single gyrus as body angle. It's Little interesting, but this is related to the limbic system, so it's not surprising basically. And the odor perception in the uncus will, will be on the medial side of the uh, paripocompal gyrus. This is represented here as 34. Uh, then uh, the pathways. Uh, the association pathways were not uh, mentioned in the previous lectures. Uh, here you see uh, the uh, most famous ones. Uh, the uh, superior longitudinal fasciculus connects uh, bidirectionally the frontal and the occipital lobe. So when we see something, for example, can influence the behavior. Things. And we have the inferior longitudinal fasciculus which connects the occipital lobe with temporal. We have a so-called uncinate fasciculus as a hook between the temporal and the frontal lobe. Again, everything is bidirectional. And we have this uh, interesting arch like the uh, arcade fasciculus, here is not mentioned, between Wernicke and Broca, that is used for uh, speech. 
And we have uh, the shortest uh, connection between even two adjacent gyres, such as the somatosensor and somatomotor cortex. These are called air gate fibers. Here uh, I'd like to show you this example uh, on the uh, speech regulation. So when we detect something as a sound, it would be uh, perceived deeply in the transverse temporal gyres, problem uh, 41 with Hashel gyres, then 42 and it sends input uh, to the uh, Wernicke's area, 22, that is very close to each other, so ipsilaterally that is the arcade fiber. Then we have this arch, the arcade fasciculus, which connects Wernicke uh, to uh, Broca, and for Broca when we want to send command to speak, we have to send uh, you know, command to the primary motor center we, in case of the head, so lingual muscles and laryngeal muscles for articulation are located in the lower part of the gyrus, so that's why it is relatively short and this is called arcade fiber. Uh, it shows uh, the commercial pathways. Uh, the most developed is the uh, corpus callosum, which connects the neocortical regions. But we have two others. The anterior commission is for the most ancient part of the cortex, for the paleocortex, so that is related to the olfactory uh, functions. The next is the hippocampal commissure or commissure formesis, which is related to the second most ancient uh, cortical areas to the hippocampus. And then I mentioned the corpus callosum. The other commission is a special thing because apparently it connects the two habanulae, uh, which belong to the uh, epithalamus of this diencephalon, but if we use bilaterally the stria terminus and stria medullaris plus the connection uh, between the two sides, then we are able to connect the two amygdalae, which belong to the telencephalon. That's why I put it in brackets, so it's quite complicated. And uh, this one is the internal capsule, uh, uh, which was mentioned already in my previous lecture. Here we have the, the descending and ascending projection pathways. At the end, uh, uh, I'd like to tell something about the dominancy, which is not equal. On the left side, we have the logic thinking, and this is the center of math and language and so on. And on the right side, uh, we have the music or artistic brain, and this is for the uh, visual imagery, for the spatial abilities. Uh, this is what we use for face recognition as well. So there are some malformations uh, where if we have a tumor, for example, on the right hemisphere, uh, the face recognition is gone, and uh, otherwise all the other detections and recognitions are fine. It's a very special phenomenon. This shows the same, but with a, with a modern technique. And at the end, we have a special experiment for the split brain phenomenon. Uh, some people uh, may be born with no corpus callosum with corpus callosum agenesis, that is one possibility for this uh, phenomenon, or uh, we may have a surgical procedure to cut the corpus callosum and this way uh, the two hemispheres are separated in case of uh, seizures or epilepsy uh, to uh, protect the one hemisphere from the other from the spreading of the seizure. So what you see here is that uh, the objects are uh, hidden uh, the patient doesn't see them, but on the screen there is a uh, you know, common what to touch ball. And he's able to touch these three objects and I can feel that which is the sphere like. So, uh, why? Because both the sensor and the motor to the left hand is on the right side. This crossing is not through the corpus callosum, this is under the corpus callosum. Uh, for example, in case of motor, uh, we uh, heard the pyramidal vacuussation, so for the left hand we send command from the right side, so we are able to use the left hand for motor and also for sensory functions. But when we need to uh, say what we touched, then we are not able to do this because uh, from the right side we have to send input to the left side where the Broca's area is found uh, in most of the population, so 90% of people, and this you know, connection is missing, so that's why we are not able to tell. Thank you very much for your attention.